Hi friends, this is Caitlin. Welcome back. We are in for a fun one today. Today I am finally getting to play with the My Favorite Things Tools of the Trade Dynamic Set as well as the Crafty Hands set. These are them. I got them back before Christmas and then things got crazy and I never got to use them. So I also have here the Crafty Friends stamp set. We're going to be pulling in one of these sentiments on our card today and then so much color. This is the watercolor rectangle stencil from my favorite things and I have a full rainbow of oxide inks as well as scraps. Every single one of these papers came from my scrap bin and that in and itself is an accomplishment for me. So if you haven't already made Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can come and hang out with me every Friday for more crafty inspiration. And if you are a new subscriber, thank you again for hanging out with us. I'm going to be starting out by creating my ink blended background today, and I'm going to do a rainbow on a diagonal across this stencil. So I'm using the Wendy Vecchi Stay... Mm, station that's what it's called station um it's the smaller one but it's absolutely perfect and I love it I went in with abandoned coral first and now I'm going in with the spiced marmalade um, I decided to do oxide inks just because they blend so smoothly and they have that beautiful kind of creamy finish to them the camera makes my blend look a little stronger than it was all of my lines look a little bit more pronounced on the camera than they do in real life but I'm still pretty happy with it especially once we go in with all of our die cuts it's going to be fine um, and to do my blending because I am doing so many colors across this smaller space I am using the mini blending brushes from Simon Says Stamp these are my favorite just because of the color coordination and this is a set that I only use with my oxide inks. I have some of the smaller and larger ones set aside that I use with my um, distress inks and some of my other regular dye ink pads, but this little set is only for distress. Um, I haven't tried going back and forth with them, but I've heard through the grapevine that it is not great to do that. Um, so I've just avoided it. So my peacock feather ink is very extra juicy, way more than the rest of my stamps or my ink pads. And so that color went on really strong. Um, but the nice thing about oxides is they layer. So all you have to do is go back and forth with the other color that's next to it and you get this beautiful transition. So I'm also using one of the Stamp Market's little stamp squares or ink squares. I love them. They hold your ink in place so perfectly. And when you're done, it just peels right up from your desk. Um, I've used them in a couple other videos, but I just can't recommend them enough. I love them. Um, I'll make sure to put them down in the description box below for you. So now I'm going through the dies and starting to pick out what I'm going to do from each color of scrap paper that I have here. I just tried to pick colors that were as close to my ink colors as possible, but I didn't worry about it too much. Nothing is an exact match. Um, that's completely fine with me. I just wanted it to have the same kind of feeling and I like to put all as many of my die cuts on through a single pass of my uh, machine as possible. So I am just trimming down all of these little pieces so that they're just big enough for the die. And I made a mistake with the crafty hands dies. I did the outer like bigger part of the hand, but I completely spaced that the other part of the die set is the inner part like the other three fingers on the hand you're supposed to cut from cardstock and put behind it to layer it looks fine when the cards put together and I wouldn't have noticed but I was on the website earlier looking at all of the die sets um, because my favorite things had a sale and I'm a sucker um, and I noticed that that's what that was so if you have this set or you get this set just know that there's a the rest of the fingers are there and you can add them to the hand. So I started out with my scissors. I am a sucker for a good Fiskars brand scissor. So I decided to make my scissors with an orange handle and I just added a tiny bit of Copic blending to some of my die cuts, literally just kind of enhancing the um, impressed lines that are already there from the dies. Um, this, I decided to turn that little jar into an actual jar that I have on my shelf with uh, a little bit of glitter flocking in it. 
Um, so that is my inspiration for that. So I put some glitter on it and set it aside to dry. I am going to make myself some teal packaged tape. Um, to do this, I sandwiched a piece of vellum, that vellum disc in between two of the teal colored papers, just so that you can see a little sliver of the vellum around it and then put that little bit that's coming out of the bottom, the part that you'd be pulling. I put that sticking out of the side and I just think it's so adorable. Um, so as I was done all my things, I'm putting them into these little trays. These are from Twiddler's Nook. I love them. I have those three. I have a couple other things from her. They stack really nicely. And then the little clear bowls are just little pinch pots that I think I got from like the dollar section of Target. So yeah, now what I'm doing is making the world's cutest, um, ink ranger ink blending tool, ink blending foam. Um, oh, I just love it so much. So I did a black handle, a tan or craft wooden base, and then the white foam. And I'm going to go in in a little bit with a Copic marker and add a little bit of ink to the foam so that it will match one of the Distress Oxide pads that I'm going to be using. And I just think it's such a simple little touch. But for anybody that is a card maker or a crafter, like you would know right away what that's supposed to be. So this is me making my Distress um, Oxide ink pads. If you wanted them to be regular Distress inks, you could do a black base instead of a dark gray. Or you could do white if you wanted to make them look like my favorite things, ink pads, whatever makes you happy. Um, and I just kind of worked my way across all of these die cuts. So now we are to the Copic markers and I am bad at math. So I cut way too many and now I have extras. Um, I also colored in way more marker, um, top, not tops, marker edges than I needed. So I'm only going to actually use one because I only have one open marker. Um, so I shaded in, what I needed was one of those triangular pieces and one of those small rectangles to be gray. That's going to be for our open marker. And then I needed one orange and then the two coral and two blue. That was perfect. So I colored in the tip of my marker, the nib, with that same orange. I'm going to go in and add the gray and then the gray rectangle at the top because if you look at your Copic markers, they have that extra gray rim. That's so you know which side is the nib and which is the chisel. And then I added the orange to the other cap. For these ones, I just added the colors to both ends, and then I went in with two Copic neutral gray markers, super light. I think it was a two and a zero, um, or a two and a one, just to shade in the lines where the caps would be connected. Um, you could also go in to add that dark gray line here, but I just didn't feel it was necessary to get the effect. If you see it with just these indentation lines, you know your brain tells you what it is. So I didn't want the hand to feel left out, so I went in with some E40 markers just to add a little bit of shading on the inside of the hand and the bottom, just kind of where the shadows would be the most intense. Um, kind of emphasizing that gap, the space, the webbing in between the thumb and the finger, and then that knuckle on the finger where our Copic marker is gonna be held, as well as a little bit of a wrist crease. This is definitely not necessary. I just think it adds that little extra touch. And if this is definitely a card that you're going to give to a crafty friend or someone who loves your cards, they're the people that are going to appreciate those little touches. So I grabbed this beautiful subway tile um, or brick kind of uh, pattern paper also from my favorite things. I'll show the pad here in just a second, I think. Um, I am so in love with this pattern paper. It's from the finishes and textiles pad. Maybe I don't show it. Um, it's from the finishes and textiles paper pad and it's amazing because it has all kinds of stuff for kind of background scenes without you having to make your own background. I'm also using one of the stitch rectangle stack dies, and because it's oxide ink that takes a little bit longer to dry, I did just put a piece of printer paper over the top before I ran it through my die cut machine, and that way my plate doesn't get ink all over it. So I wanted to pop up my rainbow against the 
um, pattern paper. So I'm going in with this giant sheet, this giant roll of thin foam tape um, just to give it some dimension without making it too crazy. I knew that I was going to be adhering my all of my die cuts flat onto the rainbow piece. So I just wanted to give it some other kind of dimension. Um, and I really like using this thin foam tape because it doesn't add a ton of bulk. So once I had that centered up, it's nice to get these straight on there because of those bricks. I just started playing around with my placement for all of my little die cuts. I knew I wanted my hand holding my Copic marker and I started kind of playing around with putting the colored items near where they were on my rainbow background and I quickly decided that was not going to work for me. So this is really the fun part of using these kinds of dies. It's the playing and building your own scene that just made it so much fun for me and I feel like there's no wrong answer. It's really just personal preference for where you like everything to go. So once I had a general layout that I liked and I thought, you know, the tape with the scissors made sense, I also have a little piece of vellum tape um, that's like pulled off of the roll and then one of the My Favorite Things cloudy stencil dies that I personally love. Um, I also cut that from vellum. That's what's in that bottom left corner. And then I picked a sentiment that fit pretty well into that space and I tried to just keep my card as flat as possible and move it so that I wasn't disturbing my general layout too much and I just stamped this in some black ink. And I just thought this sentiment was perfect. Thank you for loving my cards as much as I do because I don't have a ton of actual crafty friends that I like have their addresses and can send them cards. But I do have friends that love and support me and love my cards even though they are not card makers. And so this sentiment would work for them as well. So to add a little bit of sparkle, I grabbed the Sparkle All The Way confetti from my cute little confetti cachet my little holder that I got from well it's actually a big holder my big holder that I got from this calls for confetti um, I love it I will be sharing more information about it and um, you know some organizing updates that I've made to my little crafty space soon so keep an eye out for that um, if you have questions on anything like that leave me a comment below so I know what to make sure I cover um, and now I'm just going in with my glue. I got these tiny precision glue tip bottles from Michael's. It came in a pack of, I think, three or four. And I just transferred some of my Lawn Fawn glue into the tube, and it's been a game changer. So I put the glue on behind all of those little items on top of my vellum so that the glue doesn't show through the vellum. Um, I just thought that was a nice way to kind of conceal it and keep that illusion that it's just a stencil sitting there with all of these things piled on top. That precision tip was also perfect to get into all of these spaces where the hand is holding my Copic marker. And then I'm going to glue down the hand and the marker right in that lower right hand corner. Um, I don't know what she's coloring, but she's coloring something or she's getting ready to, and that's okay. I they, My Favorite Things does make a dynamic set that has the cards and envelopes and other things that you can have your hands be actually creating. Um, I did not spring for that yet. I just thought that I would get more use out of all of the crafty supplies. And so um, it's on my list of one days, but in the meantime, I think this still 100% gets the point across um, without having to show the card that is being made. So I went and scattered some of those sparkle all the way confetti pieces. They're beautiful. They're just like a mirror clear silver finish. Um, and so they, they add without distracting I think it gives a little pop without taking away from all of the beautiful colors um, that are going on in this piece and I love the white on white with the background and that empty space around the stencil and then I added a tiny little extra dot under the sequin on that vellum as well 
and all that needs to be done after this is for it to be popped onto a card base and you know that's not my strong suit if you've been here before so for now that is my project finish thank you so much for coming to hang out with me I hope you're feeling super inspired to break out some dyes or go check out one of the many my favorite things sales that are going on regularly thanks again for coming to hang out I hope you have an amazing week and as always happy crafting